Platforming, adventure, and saving a princess. It's not hard to say why we love the Super Mario series over the last 32 years, but this most recent entry plays a successor to the beloved and often highest regarded Mario 64, but as we dig deeper, will this latest entry continue to hold up in conversation and our hearts in the future years to come? Every new Nintendo system sees the Italian plumber in a slightly different light, sometimes switching up mechanics in varied ways with the last being a cat suit that allowed you to climb up walls, with the days of the old with the flying tanuki suit. This time around we are paired with a ghost creature that serves as your traveling companion and as cover for Mario's head, as they hunt down Bowser, who once again has stolen the Princess Toadstool from her kingdom and taken Cappy's younger sister along for a ride as the bride-to-be's crown, destroying Mario's iconic red cap in the process as he speeds away. <laughs> This loose storyline serves as a reason for traveling through a series of varied worlds as Bowser picks up things for the wedding to a resistant Princess Peach. It's a thin and repetitive through line, but never gets in the way of having an enjoyable time. As you try to catch up to Bowser's ship as he stays one step ahead in a game of cat and mouse, you travel through beautiful deserts, forests, cities, and stranger kingdoms such as a place made completely of food in the rightly named Lunching Kingdom, as well as some other crazy lands that we won't spoil. You'll jump, dash, and search to find new and interesting ways of using your new friend, from using him to take over enemies and possess their bodies, or using the hat itself as a platform mechanic to jump off of, allowing you to reach new heights. Never has a Super Mario game felt so good to traverse. Some of the more dedicated and talented have even gone to use what's given you from the start of the game to play in crazy ways, solving puzzles in bizarre fashions, and even getting into areas no person is seemingly meant to be, yet are strangely rewarded when doing so, as the Nintendo themselves have just let the players be more free than ever, allowing you to break from the intended path as you make your own. Most of the general settings seen in previous titles are here, yet each shines in new ways, such as the Sand Kingdom, normally set to a harsh sun and stark scenery, has fallen to a sudden frost over with scattered, large boating chunks of ice, chilling its happens to the core as it clashes with its desert setting.
Your main task consists of collecting moons that serve as your ship's power source, and needing so many before you're able to move on to the next kingdom. But as you do, you are never stopped or delayed from getting one moon and then snagging another immediately after. Each kingdom is large and filled with these in every corner of the map and in cleverly hidden spots amongst the characters you meet. Everything has a sense of purpose, and figuring out how to use what's around you is a satisfying feeling not felt for some time. Sometimes beating your head against a particular moon, though, is best avoided until you progress further in game, or even post game, as the total number is staggering, and collecting all can become a bit of a chore if you plan on 100%ing the game. If it sounds like I'm complaining, I'm not. The game is pure joy, especially with some of the best soundtracks for the kingdoms, each setting a mood and giving emotion to moments that are spectacular in every sense of the word in any Mario game I've ever seen before. From the chill vibe in the Wooded Kingdom to the funky tunes of New Donk City, with most having an 8-bit version, none of the 82 tracks land as a dud and can easily be played from a list that you can choose at any time, which is a lovely post-game feature when finishing up on remaining tasks. But as this Mario does hit a newfound love within my heart, I do have some minor complaints. First would be the sometimes forceful camera, and then next the motion controls. The camera can sometimes be locked into position so as not to reveal things around, or just stubborn as it doesn't go to the most helpful spots or finding commands as you try to quickly move it while on the go. Motion controls can also be non-responsive or taking commands as something other than intended. Although it's never completely required to use your Joy-Cons with motion, it does become beneficial if you can learn to get them the way, the way you intend them, pulling off several life-saving moves, like the spin throw. Neither have truly hindered what is sure to be one of the best Super Mario games ever made, but did become noticeable blemishes on a golden apple. The game looks great, even off the dock as you take your Switch on the go, and the inclusion of assist mode makes the game available to any skill level of gamer, as it helps you to figure out where to go next. Also helpful is the removal of the lives counter, as seen in the previous entries, instead taking your gold coins, limiting what you can purchase at the shops. Controls are as fluid as they ever have been, and your sense of adventure has rarely reached this height. Super Mario Odyssey has taken its heritage from games of the past, and not only embraced what made previous titles so beloved, but doesn't rely solely on what was, but doubles down on what it can do. Open world's great visuals and tight platforming mixed with one of his best abilities seen to date has crafted a game that deserves praise and makes it my favorite on a long line of those battling for favoritism.